As we continue with our weekly fan and press luncheon, we wrap things up by bringing in JMU men's basketball coach, Lewis Rowe. The Dukes have gone one and two since the last time we were here at O'Neill's with Coach Rowe. A week ago Saturday, it was an 80 to 77 overtime loss to George Mason. Last Wednesday, a 65-56 setback at Charlotte, a very difficult place to play, I might add. And Saturday, the Dukes got a 71-59 win at Longwood, a game in which Jackson Kent established a career high 22 points, and he was a perfect five on five trays in that contest. Next up, the Dukes head to Western Michigan, Kalamazoo, Michigan, for a Saturday afternoon game, one o'clock. Craig Orndorff will be on the call on the JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. Pre-game coverage begins at 12.30. You can hear that on Matazone Free Audio, as well as uh, 5.50 AM radio, 92.1 FM radio, tune in, and WSVA online. So let's bring in Coach Rowe. Thank you. Coach, congratulations. You and I talked uh, out of Mason and out of Charlotte how close your team was getting. How different was it at Longwood? How, how different was their play at Longwood versus getting the end result that you wanted? Well, I thought the energy was, was similar. We've been, we've been playing and practicing with the right type of energy, and, and I think the guys have been pretty focused. Um, but I think the difference was in the kind of shots that we took and obviously in the outcome of those shots. And I, I use this, I said this to the guys after the game. We shot the exact same amount of threes, 21 at Charlotte, and we were two for 21. But they were a different type of three-pointers. We shot 21 threes against Longwood. We made nine. Jackson was five of five. Uh, Ramon made one. Tom made one. And I think that was because they were good shots. And that's something that we've been stressing is, trying to get good shots within the offense. The energy on defense has been good. We've been working at it. It's not where I want it to be, but it's been good. The guys have been focused, and uh, we needed to make some shots offensively. You said after the game, Jackson, everybody was talking about sort of going back and, and, and being excited to watch the film and see what you guys did well enough to win. So now that you've reviewed the film, what did you guys do so well that allowed you guys to, to finally break through against Longwood? Well, I think we established a style of play physically as well. I know we made shots, but Tom, for instance, and even Ramon came off the bench, and he's kind of – he has a physical body, and he's kind of been playing finesse. And uh, he got to the rim. He got some offensive rebounds and putbacks. Yohani got some dunks at the rim. V.J. Holmes got to the rim and had some nice uh, drop-offs for some assists. And I think we established a physicality and a style of play more aggressive offensively rather than just settling for one or two pass jump shots. I think it helped us. Coach Jackson's been really emerging uh, in double figures the last four or five games and, and becoming maybe a leader, if you will, attacking the basket. How are you seeing him grow and where is his confidence right now? Well, I, I hope his confidence is high. I've actually, since he's gotten here, I've tried to tell him, I, I see you in the gym. I know how hard you're working. He's one of the hardest working guys in the program. And so I have confidence in you. Take shots. And now I want you to take good ones. Don't get forced. Don't get sped up. But I want him to have confidence and understand that I have confidence in him. And I'll say this about Jackson. Since I got here, he's drawn one of the tougher assignments defensively. And that people don't understand. Like, he's guarded some guys that are really good guys for 38 minutes. And, you know, that takes a toll on you, and it's a sacrifice. And he's, he's definitely been willing to do it and, and taking on the challenge. And that in itself speaks about where he is and obviously what he wants to get out of his senior year. He's definitely bought in and wants to play hard. And it's a matter of him seeing some shots go down. But I have all the confidence in the world in I know it was a couple days ago, but can you just describe the sigh of relief for the team just to get that first win out of the way for you and, and how you build on that? Yes, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say there was a sigh of relief collectively from the team. Like we walked in the locker room and the guys were really happy for me. And I told him, I understand that that's the elephant in the room that, you know, we hadn't. But I thought we were, and we still are. It's just one win. And we, but I want the guys, I don't want the guys to relax. I don't want us to ever feel comfortable. I want us to be doing the right things in the process to get wins. And we, the defense, paying attention to detail and, and sharing the basketball. And, and um, you know, it's one win, but it is good to get that win. And I, wanted, I want these guys to be empowered. I always say that. I don't want them to get a win for me. Even though that was nice, I, f I felt really good about it. But I know they were pressing, and pressing not only for themselves, but for me as a, as a coach. And that says something about those guys and where we're at as a team and 
I'm appreciative, but I want them to keep embracing what we're doing and understand that it's their team and they have to own it. You'd wanted this team all year to hold one another accountable, and it seems that's starting to take place. Where is that now? Because in listening back to the broadcasts uh, Saturday, there was a couple of times Carl and Clint mentioned, a couple of guys were kind of barking at one another because they didn't do what the other should have done, but they did it because they wanted to be in the right place. Talk about where the accountability is being held right now. Well, again, I still think it's a work in progress. I'm always about the journey and not so much the destination. And we're not – obviously, we're, we're not there yet. But, but I'll say this. Joey, Tom, Jax, even Tom and Jax – Jax was having a good game, but he, there were some things, and Tom got on him during the game. And that goes back to what I'm saying. Like, that, that's how you get a winning team and build a winning program is that guys hold each other accountable. And I look at that even with, with, with Coach O'Regan and, and what, what Coach Kenny Brooks established here, and obviously Coach O'Regan's doing a fine job with it too. They're, they're accountable. They, they, they expect stuff out of each other. And uh, to win, like I always talk about going back to my days playing here, Darren McClinton and Kent Kaluko and Clayton Ritt, all those guys, they were my friends. But if I was out of place on the court or off the court, they, they let me know. And that's how you build a winning program. So those guys are starting to embrace that. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm about the process. I hope they continue to do it. I'm going to continue to push guys like Joey to, to – he's saying more and he's doing more, but I'm going to put more on him. And he's got to embrace it and keep, and keep developing as a leader. Not to say that you guys weren't practicing very hard before the Louisiana game. But since that Louisiana game, since you sort of talked to everybody at midcourt, there seems to be a lot better energy. There seems to have been, you guys seem to have gotten closer and closer, obviously following, uh, finally getting the win Saturday. Did you see an elevated, I guess, effort and, and attention to detail maybe in, in practice over the past two? Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of something that I've, I've talked about too. And it's, you know, I was very careful, and I am very careful. These guys have been here, the, the seven seniors, they've won. And there were some things that I wanted to do, and I'm not saying I was light on the guys or something like that at all, but there were some things that I wanted to do, and I, you know, it was, it was a filling out process, I'll say that. And as we got into the season, it was one of these things where I said, I don't want to fill out things anymore. There are some things that I, that, like, especially defensively, there's some, there's some things that I, I believe in, and I wanted to – like, we had to get those things right. So there was, there's, has been an elevated sense of focus and energy, and the guys have been very receptive and bought in. And they, these guys want to win. They, they want to play hard. So there were some things that we tweaked and went back to and, and um, again, talked to the seniors. I brought them in my office after, I think, maybe the Texas Southern loss, and we had a heart-to-heart, -heart and I talked about, well, this is what I expect. I don't – you know, 58% is crazy. I don't – like, we don't get scored on like that. And so guys have embraced some, some of the different philosophies. And, and uh, so we're just tweaking some stuff, and the guys want to win. So the energy has been good. Now that Vince is back in the lineup, how does that change, or does it change, Terrence's role? Because like you've said he's still learning and adapting coming from a football player. He was playing a lot more in the first five games now that Vince is back in. Does that alter or change what you do with Terrence? No. I mean, the rotation is always – tricky when you have a lot of guys it's a little easier you know there's we again we go back to the seven seniors then some of the guys that I brought in so there's really 10 11 guys that are sitting there that you know maybe early on you're just trying to play guys trying to play guys you almost got a schedule in your head well I got to put this guy in at this time and um the object is to win and guys are going to earn their minutes and it's not that Terrence is playing better he hasn't he hasn't earned his minutes but he has to there's things that he has to learn and there's some things that we're still pushing him to do. And he's, 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 he's it's coming, it's coming. But he's, he's got to earn the minutes and practice just like everybody else. And, and, um, and, and so, yeah, like out of VJ's back and VJ can play kind of multiple positions and can help Joey get, get, you know, can take Joey off the ball a little bit. It does. There's some things that I can do with the lineup that are a little different now. And Terrence is going to have to come in and fight. Building off the last question, I mean, are you just maybe then coaching them harder than you were the, the first couple of weeks of the season? I don't think I'm coaching them harder, but I will say there's, there's you know, there's some things I wanted to learn. There's some things I had to learn. There's some things I needed to see. And, um, and um, so no, I, don't, I don't think my intensity or my focus 
Like I'm, I'm an intense and passionate person. I think they understood that I was passionate, but I do think some of the th like some of the some of the things that I there were things that I wanted to do with this with this program and with this team. And uh, you know, you 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 want to make sure that those guys are they've done things a different way, and I wanted to respect that. And at the end of the day, you got to understand these guys are players. They want to win, and I'm the coach. And there's some things that I needed to do. There's some things I needed to put my, my, my stamp on. And we've just been more attentive to those things lately. During the early part of the season, you were playing so quickly. There was a quick turn after every game, it seemed like. And I asked you at one point, are you glad to be playing right away or would you rather have more time? Well, now that you've got more time, would you now coming off of a win, would you like to keep the momentum going and play sooner? Or are you still relishing having this week? No, we're relishing having this week. The guys needed the week. There's some guys that are getting some stuff done academically and it was coming fat when you're trying to again going back to your question when you're trying to I was trying to put my stamp on some of the things and and tweak some things you don't have much turnaround you know you're trying to prep and um coach Dean actually said it yesterday we actually ran a little bit yesterday and and did some stuff that was us not necessarily prep uh some stuff just to help us get better and and fine-tune some things and so we did a little bit of running and, and uh coach Dean was said it's a good day to blow the pipes out and it was true. We we got we cleaned out the pipes yesterday, and and uh, when you, you when you have time to do that, it's it's really good. And we still have time to now go back and prep for the Saturday game. And again, you want to build momentum. You want to build momentum. I understand it's just you know we've been playing okay for a while, and you know things are getting better. But it's one win, and you know you got to get beyond that. And I don't want these guys to get comfortable ever. So we went back to work. Look, looking ahead to Saturday's game, obviously coming from Bowling Green, you're semi-familiar with Western Michigan. What, what, what stands out to you about the Broncos? Well, even they're honestly a little different from last year. We actually split with them last year, and it was my scout last year, interestingly enough. Um, we, we actually beat them at their place, and they beat us at our place last year. They have a guard, a junior guard, that's really good, really good. And, um, you know, that's kind of the story of who we play. We, we're playing all these good guards. And um, they have a wing, Heyman, that, that's also a really good player as a senior and um, really gritty, plays multiple positions, kind of does everything for the team. And they have a big guy inside, Drake Lamont, who's actually from Miami. I know him really well. And, uh, you know, he's physical inside, so they can score inside and out. But what's interesting about them this year is that they brought in some freshmen that are some good-looking freshmen, bring some athleticism, some physicality up front. One's a three and one's a four. So they've added some pieces to a team that was – you know, that, that had some talent last year. And uh, so, so and we're playing them on the road. We played a lot of games on the road, have a few more. We got to get through this gauntlet of all these road games. But I think it's experience and it's seasoning, and it'll help us down the road. But this is another quality opponent, half size, half athleticism, and we got to be disciplined and play hard. Coach, as you continue to tweak some things, of course, and you do have a little more time between games, looking at your shooting percentage, 31% on three-pointers. You're averaging about 22 that you're attempting per game, uh, shooting at 42% roughly overall. Are, are you pleased, or how do you assess your shot selection thus far, and how will you uh, go ahead and tweak that maybe? I don't want to – again, it goes back to confidence. I don't want to take away shots from guys. I don't want guys to be tentative or play tight. I believe in these guys. and uh, But the thing I want, and especially, you know, my style was more aggressive downhill, didn't really shoot. I think I made 40-something threes in my career here. Um, so it was more aggressive attacking the basket. And, and so I want to, and I think that you can collapse the defense. And then guys like Jackson, Shakir, Tom, any of those guys, Yvonne, that we got guys that can make shots. But you have to get good shots. And so to me, it's not about taking down the number of threes or something like that, but it's about the quality of those shots. And I think we do need to attack the basket, have a presence inside, even if it's off the dribble, if it's Joey and VJ and Ramon getting to the rim, or if it's throwing it into Yohani, excuse me, and playing through those guys and maybe getting Jackson, and Shaq and, and Joey, getting those guys some better shots. And I think our percentage is a reflection of the fact that we haven't taken great shots all the time and guys have been kind of maybe forcing some stuff. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta play together, move the ball and share the ball, and then we'll get more quality shots. On a much, much, much lighter note, uh, did notice you kept your jacket on for the entire Longwood game. Is that something that uh, will continue now that you finally have that, that one win? The coaches actually teased me about that. They, they had a, 
an over-under on when I was going to take it off. It's just a matter of me being hot and then not wanting to sweat. And, um, and, um, but I, I, you, you, we've all done some things a little different, you know, as coaches and players. You have your little – so they were like, Coach, you might want to keep your jacket on and, 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 and see what it does. And, you know, going forward, I don't know. But it, it, worked, it worked for that game. I don't know if it's so much of the jacket or that we hit shots and guys play really hard, but, but I'll take it. All right, Coach Lou Rowe, any other questions for members of the media? Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck. Have a safe journey to Kalamazoo, Michigan, the Dukes, and Western Michigan on Saturday, 1 o'clock on the JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. Thank you for joining us this week here at O'Neill's Grill.